I've been hearing about Alaska for as long as I can remember. There's this like, there's this whole mystique surrounding Alaska and fishing in Alaska, and it's like the last frontier. You know, it, it just, it calls to mind images of wilderness and, and unspoiled beauty and just monster, monster fish. It's my experience that almost everyone wants to go to Alaska at one time or another, whether it's for wildlife viewing or to fish or they're hunters or something, but everyone kind of has a call to go up. It's to the last frontier, so to speak. It's the ultimate dream for a lot of people. Writing has always been my passion, one of my passions. The Alaska Chronicles is just a great idea for a book. The book was born in a tent in the middle of the Katmai National Park in the wilderness, usually while it was raining. A true account of the stories that happened while we were up there guiding. The book is about what it's like on a daily basis to go up and guide in the wilderness in Alaska. It's something that, that most people will never even have a chance to, to think about doing. It was just something I needed to see. It was something that I needed to experience. And the only way I was really going to experience it was if I worked there, was if I guided up there. So then my next challenge was to take all these very raw, disparate entries that I'd written in very gritty moments and turn them into a cohesive manuscript and make them into a book. What you get is exactly what was going on, exactly what I was feeling. It's not censored at all. You're gonna read stories about fantastic days, triumphs, and total losses. The motor seized after about 10 minutes on the water. You're on call every waking moment of the day. You don't really feel like getting out of bed to go unload the boat when a guy shows up at two in the morning, but that's the way it is. Some guides go to the Great Alaskan Bush Company and uh, spend half their summer on, on strippers. But I wouldn't know about that because I missed the opportunity to go see strippers. I mean, we don't have a nine to five. We don't have to pick up a phone. We don't have to pay rent or buy our own food. Every day you woke up, you ate, you fished, and you pooped, and I loved it. The trout are enormous. They're aggressive. They eat mice. Watching the salmon move into the river, watching their progression, they change color. Their body shapes change. They eat giant gaudy flies that look like the worst Paris Hilton jewelry you've ever seen in your life. You end up with close friendships with people and, and a bond and a trust with your coworkers that you just don't get any other way. You live with these guys every day and you get to be really close friends. If some guy has a problem, we know it. He's not back on time. We're out the door in the boats and going after them as soon as we can. You just know that you're not going to get left behind when you got super close friends. I really like the camaraderie of camp and just being, just being out there to fish and have fun. That's kind of the way I like to live my life anyway, you know, just a bumbling, stumbling, rambling, rolling tumbleweed. And uh, Alaska, there's a lot of space to, to be blown by the wind. Basically all I want out of life is to go have a good time. And you get to hear some inside scoops of what it's like. You're kind of behind the scenes, you're in the tents, you're on the water with the clients. It really lets you know what it's like up there, and it's fun to read the stories. It is almost a celebration of just going and being in Alaska and enjoying it. If you want to know what it's really like up there on a day-to-day, -day, grinded out basis, that's what this book does. So it's, I think it's, it's completely unique in what it's offering.